Hi, welcome back. Today I want to show uh, DaVinci Resolve running on my AMD Radeon 7900 GRE. This is a follow-up to my Nobara first look video. Something I wanted to show is Nobara now has a wiki on it. This is something very good. You'll have uh, updating the system and all of that. You can do your changes here. It's got three versions of Nobora, and it'll actually, you know, gives you, you can limit what it shows you in Grub. Something I want to go to, but this is something really cool. If you're on NVIDIA, switching between the open or closed proprietary source NVIDIA drivers. So they do have the open source Novu and NVK drivers installed. If you have an NVIDIA GPU and looks like you can switch between them, it is a uh, process to switch them, but you can. It's pretty cool that you can do that. But since we're AMD, you got all this using dedicated GPU. If you got that, you got OpenCL Rock'em support, which kind of went over. If you installed DaVinci Resolve, this stuff gets installed. So, but I'm going to go to DaVinci Resolve really quick. And we're just going to scroll down because you have all this GPU switching and stuff like that. Adding support <laughs> for H.264 and H.265 encode is limited to NVIDIA GPUs. However, you can add them as CPU encoders if you have an AMD or an Intel GPU. Uh, I noticed uh, there really isn't an Intel setting here. However, with this, you can set up these H.264, H.265, and even a ProRes encoder. So there is a Google Drive link here that you can go to. So on this site, you want to download these bundles is what you want to do. I usually just click the download and just wait for it to download. I'm going to go back actually. And while that starts to download, I did this under a uh, arch and it took it a minute to actually figure it out. <laughs> But you will copy stuff. So what I'm going to do, I want to open a terminal. Got a console here. Did it start doing it? Download anyway. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this directory here, the opt-in resolve, which is where it is installed. So if I go cd opt and then I can ls you can see that resolve is there so cd resolve okay now if you ls that io plugins folder is not there so you need to do a make directory so sudo mkdir iop plugins so you need that folder created. Otherwise, copying the files over will not work. <laughs> so as you can see, it's created right there. So for now, I'm going to close that folder. And then I'm going to go here. It's a current video I'm editing right now, which you'll see here in a sec. Go to home, downloads. I can delete that. You want to unzip this folder. This is something I found when I was doing this on Arch. And with the way this command is set up, it's wanting you to copy the DVCP bundle. So go into here because it's got the bundle folders. And from inside this directory, right click, open terminal here. Okay, so from here, you can select copy. 
go to your terminal, right click, paste, and you need to make sure you get rid of that dollar sign. I don't know why that's even there because you got to make sure sudo is on the screen. And before I do this command, I actually want to show, I'm just going to close my folder view because I did accidentally close this window, but I want to launch DaVinci Resolve and show you that when you have an AMD GPU, your encoder options are kind of limited. But if I go to deliver, it's defaults to QuickTime, but if I go here from DNxHD, you see it ends at uncompressed photo MPEG. This is the default that most AMD users do use, but and it's the same even if you select a different file container. So I can say make MKV, not really many options. So I'm gonna quit resolve on this command. I'm just gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask for my password. And what I just did here does work in Arch and other distributions reopen DaVinci Resolve because they do have an API for adding uh, different encoder exports, export encoders. So now I can leave it on QuickTime, which is what I'm going to do. But now when I go here, you see it scrolls now. So I've got ProRes 422, HQ, LT, Proxy, then Uncompressed. Then I have X264 baseline, high, high 422, X264, main, X265, main, and then X25, X, XH265, main 10. So this high 422 and this main 10, I believe both of these are 10 bit. Um, because these are X264 and X265, you need to make sure you have FFmpeg installed on your system because I'm. it's very obvious that this is using FFmpeg installed on your system. So I'm going to dig into this a little bit because if they are using FFmpeg, there's got to be a way to add VA API to one of these export plugins. And, you know, let's see, I'll select, uh, I'll select X264 high. You can also do X265 main. I'll select that. Depending on your CPU, this is going to put a lot of load on your system. Honestly, I leave this default timeline resolution. So 4K timeline frame rate is 60. I just leave the encoder at faster. I honestly haven't seen a loss in quality, but I do change this, the factor, I change that to like 20. This is kind of essentially representing the QRP or QRF or constant quality rate inside of OBS Studio is what this is. And I found 20 literally exports out the video to where it looks exactly the same as as my OBS recording, no loss in quality at all. Uh, if you want to do stuff, maybe you want to re encode your video in a different program, maybe you want to encode it in Caden Live to use VA API. But I'm hoping to look into that. You can do <laughs> ProRes 422 HQ, leave your settings, and you know. Just leave stuff the way it is and, and then add it over here and it'll start exporting in ProRes. Uh, that's actually nice. Uh, obviously, the NVIDIA users don't run into this issue, but, you know, uh, same AMD, NVIDIA or AMD users do run into this. But something I do want to show, when I was running under Arch, now, this is on a 2.5 inch SSD, so just be patient <laughs> for it to generate previews. It is kind of slow. Uh, but if I go, say, here, 
I can start playback, I'm done other and than it's updating fine. The system and installing OBS to get the record. You know, as you could see, it played back totally fine. Uh, I'm gonna do this really quick. I'm gonna make it play back at double speed and see how it does. Can go. I want to go through some stuff here. Once this is in here, you can go to your first. Okay. Steps. You can have your update system, which I've already. As you can see that's the perfectly fine. Still getting sixty. But also, if I hit it again, still getting sixty. If I look over at my video card, the fans are actually running on it. Where under Linux, or well, where under Arch Linux, the fans would never spin up during video editing. It does it now inside of Nobora, which makes me actually happy. Um, I just want to scroll over because I did a little bit of gameplay footage here. Actually, what I could do, let me close DaVinci Resolve real quick because that's already a saved project. We're going to load in the previous uh, Planet Crafter footage. Now, because of the way this installed, it does not let you do the initial setup. So I always have to go in here and select 4K for my timeline resolution. Select 60. I don't do anything else because I'm not like I would normally go into here if I'm using like my uh, Lumix S5 II with its 10-bit footage. But not doing that since I'm just using my gameplay footage. So I'm actually going to open this. I want to go to photos. Let's see. I don't know why I recorded it into here, but this is uh, some footage I did record. Um, this footage is actually, now that I think about it, is actually currently not up on YouTube. This is a Planet Crafter video I decided to scrap, actually, because... <laughs> Did not like how it came out. As you can see, I got four clips. I'm just going to go here. Do a cut. Unlink the clips. Because this clip here is both of these clips. So that's mainly for when I decide to prepare to live stream eventually. But. This is where I've had issues in the past, is playback on this. Hi. Welcome back. So, I will turn down this audio from the screen here. We're going to just double play, see how it does. Fan on my GPU is still going. Okay, it's definitely playing back perfectly fine. I could try to go to this. There's a little bit of a stutter at this speed. Okay. <laughs> Did see the stutter at the three times, but... Just here. Okay. I believe it's actually working pretty good because this is how I edit my videos. I do it at 2x speed uh, just so I can get through it quicker. Video card fan has not stopped spinning, so it's definitely, definitely working. This is actually... I'm going to not save that because I will be re-recording some footage for uh, Linux, for my Linux gaming. This is actually something I'm just going to show it. See if people are interested in this or not. Is there a video player installed out of the box? I don't think there is. So, because of that, we're actually going to experience something real quick. We're going to, let's see. This is what I usually use because I don't really care for VLC anymore. We're going to go ahead and confirm that. 
you know, there is going to be a few of my Nobara experience videos coming, you know, as I utilize this. Because honestly, when I first started using Linux, Fedora was my first Linux distro I used. It was actually back then it was called Fedora Core because this is back in 2004. <laughs> so, so now I can open this in Haruna. I actually... This is footage recorded from my Steam Deck, actually. So, as you can see, this is the PC Engine CD. Uh, you know, that I recorded over HDMI from my Steam Deck docked. I've got tons of emulators on my Steam Deck, but this is just one of them. Okay, and I did... Record some footage of Asteragos. I actually am working on a review video of this game. Because I am going to start reviewing games running on the Steam Deck. You know, the gameplay footage actually looks really good. I'd probably sharpen it a bit, though, from DaVinci Resolve. But, because it is 1280 by 720 captured in OBS at 4K. So, <laughs> so you know... But let me know if anyone wants to see me reviewing games for the Steam Deck and, and just kind of reviewing how they perform and just how the games are. But yeah, that's something I want to do going forward on this channel is reviewing games on the Steam Deck and showing gaming on Linux, but also just tech in general. I did see my local Micro Center does have Intel Arc Battle Mage cards now. So probably in the coming months, I am going to build an open air test bench and probably purchase a B580 Intel card to test. Um, probably will be do going with a 90, RX 9070 XT to test on the channel also but for sure i more than likely i'm going to be getting an rtx 5070 ti for this computer for my main workstation uh but that also depends on how things go using davinci resolve on here that's really the biggest factor is how resolve performs when I do my 40 minute hour long gameplay videos, because that is something I'm going to be continuing. But let me know. Like, comment below, share the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Later.